Hi everyone, uh, right now we are on the topic of uh, acoustic emission testing and in uh, last couple of lectures uh, we have already discussed about the basic principle and few other aspects about uh, this particular technique. And in the previous lecture we have seen two effects, uh, Kaiser and Felicity effects which talk about the relationship between the previous loading history and the acoustic emission events. And then we also learned how these two particular effects uh, indicate about uh, presence of active defects uh, when they develop uh, inside a structure in a given interval. Okay. And then we also uh, just started this uh, uh, signal parameters and two of the parameters we discussed in the last class if you remember. So, this is uh, what we started about uh, the signal parameters and today we will continue on this and uh, learn about the other parameters. Okay. So, if you remember I told I, I, I told you uh, that uh, uh, the first thing that you need to do you need to define this uh, threshold and above this threshold uh, whatever signal you see uh, that is taken as an actual uh, acoustic emission signal and below this uh, threshold whatever you get that is considered as noise. Okay. So, that is the first thing which is done. This uh, threshold is user defined based upon uh, the experience of the user or based upon the kind of part uh, you have or the kind of defects you are expecting and so on. Okay. And the first of the parameters uh, which was uh, counts, we discussed this uh, in the previous class. It is nothing but the number of uh, crossings or the number of excursion that you see above the threshold. Okay. So, this is primarily this peaks that you have uh, which are above the threshold and count uh, is a parameter which will uh, depend on uh, certain other aspects that also we have discussed. And the second parameter is known as the amplitude or the peak amplitude. Okay. So, that means the maximum signal that you have which is this one. Now, if you uh, consider the time uh, which is elapsed between uh, the first crossing and the last uh, threshold crossing, that means the time above the threshold, if you consider that, that particular time interval is known as duration. So, this is another parameter. duration which is indicated by D. So, as I said this is uh, time elapsed above the threshold So, that means uh, this is the time difference between the first threshold crossing and the last one. As we have already indicated in the diagram. Okay. Uh, this uh, parameter duration, this is quite useful uh, while you are doing uh, acoustic emission testing and it uh, depends on uh, duration depends on uh, the magnitude of the acoustic uh, source.
and it also depends on the frequency of the source. And as I said, uh, this is a very useful parameters which can be used uh, to do a uh, few things uh, while doing acoustic emission testing. For example, uh, this parameter can be used to filter out the noise. Because uh, duration uh, can be used uh, to identify different types of uh, emission. And as a result, uh, this can be used uh, to identify noise that means emissions which are coming out from some other source which are not related to the defect. Okay. And hence uh, useful for filtering noise. The next one uh, that we have is known as uh, rise time, which is written as R. And this is the time interval uh, between the first uh, threshold crossing and the peak. So, this is the rise time. So, this particular uh, parameter is uh, related to uh, the propagation of uh, the acoustic waves uh, between the source and the sensor. And hence, uh, this can be used uh, to qualify uh, the emissions, to qualify the signal and as a result, this can also be used as a criteria to filter out noise. Okay. So, these are uh, some of the parameters uh, of the acoustic emission signal and as uh, you could see uh, many of these parameters are quite useful, uh, particularly uh, identifying the signal whether it is coming out from actual acoustic emission events or not and uh, filter out the noise which may uh, come from some other sources which are not related to defect. Okay. So, we will talk about that uh, little later as to how uh, some of this parameter or at least one of these parameters can be used to filter out the noise from the uh, emission signal. But there is one more parameter uh, which will indicate uh, uh, about uh, the size of the source or the energy of the source and uh, this is uh, known as
marks and if you expand this, uh, this stands for measured area under the rectified signal envelope. Okay, so, what you do in order to get this parameter that signal that you have you rectify it, okay. you uh, smoothen it get a smooth uh, signal out of it by rectifying it and if you uh, measure the area under that uh, rectified uh, signal that will uh, give you uh, this parameter which is related to the energy in the signal. Okay. So, that means, if you have a signal like this, this has to be first uh, rectified. So, you need to make it smooth like this. And now, if you uh, measure the area under this uh, rectified signal, this is the parameter Mars. Okay. So, this uh, tells you about uh, the energy levels uh, in the acoustic emission signal. So, this is also a measure of uh, the signal strength. And this particular parameter is uh, sensitive to duration. And the peak amplitude or the amplitude but it uh, does not take into account uh, the user defined threshold and uh, the operating frequency. Okay, so, these are uh, the different parameters uh, with regard to the acoustic emission signal. Now, uh, since we have learned about the basic principle, uh, the signal and the other aspects. So, now we can go ahead and see uh, the measurement system and the data how it is displayed and how the defects are interpreted. Okay. So, if you talk about the measurement system. The major component here is the sensor, which can convert these uh, elastic stress waves, uh, which are coming out from the sample into an electrical signal, uh, which can be shown on the display and can be interpreted in terms of a defect. Okay. So, that is the main component here and of course, you have that electronic circuit and other things, uh, the amplifiers and so on in order to uh, amplify the signal and characterize it and finally, display it. So, the sensor uh, here also is uh, 
made of a piezoelectric element like what you have uh, uh, in an ultrasonic uh, transducer. So, this lead zirconate uh, titanate uh, piezoelectric elements can be used uh, in these sensors. So, first uh, you collect the signal uh, by the sensor which is uh, sent into a pre amplifier first. and then uh, through the uh, electronics uh, in the system uh, you characterize the signal that means you identify the signal and see the quality of it whether it is coming out from actual acoustic emission events or there are a lot of noise and things like that. So, that is called the characterization of the signal. And then uh, finally, you uh, send it to the display system either through a single channel or you can also send it through multiple channels uh, depending on what kind of sources you have, how many uh, acoustic emission events is being picked up uh, by the sensor and so on. Okay. So, for a particular uh, defect or for a particular acoustic emission event, you can collect a number of heat you can collect a number of signals and you can send them through multiple channels to the display.